I've been, in the past, writing mostly about the past. And for a long time, decades, I worked behind the scenes in the Natural History Museum on these, my favorite animals, called trilobites. Uh, and I've written a book about trilobites. Uh, what I have never done is go out into the field to look at what you might call living fossils. Well, Darwin actually called them living fossils. Uh, animals that are related to forms long extinct, but which somehow have survived through to the present day. Um, now, they've had to clear all sorts of extraordinary hurdles in the process, particularly mass extinction events. Now, most of you will know, I'm sure, about the event that brought the dinosaurs to an end and many other forms besides. Perhaps few of you, fewer of you will know about the great extinction event 250 million years ago uh, that brought almost everything to an end uh, at the end of the Permian period. Uh, I'm going to call it the great dying. Um, well, some organisms have come through not only the dinosaur extinction, but the great dying. Indeed, some have come through events still earlier. So these are remarkable organisms, animals and plants, that have survived for a, a, a very long period of geological time. And just to give us a homely analogy, let's imagine that where I'm standing, my feet are on the floor, uh, and the present day is the ceiling. And let's say that the length of time of the Earth is as high as this room, just to give us a scale. So four billion years of time is represented by the height of this room. And that will sort of indicate whereabouts we are for one or two of these organisms, just to keep us respectable. So where do I go, and where do I start the book, uh, to see the living thing closest to trilobites? Um, well, this is where I went, to see the living relatives of the trilobites, the horseshoe crab. The horseshoe crab is a rel very close relative uh, of the trilobites. They split off from the main line that leads to the trilobites probably 450 million years ago. And there were things 400 million years ago that you would look at and say, my goodness, that's a horseshoe crab. So this is a real marathon runner among uh, the survivors. Now, they're not rare either. In fact, they, there are millions of them. And they come to shore, the female digs a hole in the sand, and the males clamber aboard to try and fertilize uh, the eggs that the female has just laid. And um, I'm just going to offer you proof. I'm not going to show you fossils of everything. Uh, but here's one you can probably see on the right there. There's a fossil horseshoe crab at the end of its trail. You can see the footsteps going around in a sort of semicircle. Uh, it died having padded across a Jurassic, in this case, a lagoon. And the front of my book has the fossil one at the bottom and the living one at the top. And those at the front can see how similar, very, very similar they are, almost down to details. So that's what they were like 150 million years ago, well even double that. And funnily enough, when I was on Delaware Bay, I saw tracks made by the living horseshoe crab that were just like those little hair pits made by its fossil relative. 